afternoon, everyone. My name is Bob DeFeo. I'm from Bentley Systems. I'm here along with my colleague, Ray Howard. Um, thank you for having us. Um, today, I'm just going to talk briefly about, um, so Bentley's a global company. Uh, we have many products to support um, the AEC industry. And today, I'm going to focus in the short time that I have on our uh, BIM solution or for building. So uh, Ecosim Building Designer. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few different parts of that so you get to know the software, but uh, basically it's an architectural, mechanical, electrical solution um, by Bentley. And you can see up on the screen there now, uh, basically what's happening is we're using um, hand sketches as part of the schematic process. Um, so we have the ability to be able to overlay them um, directly on the design file uh, in the model, specifically um, different layers of the model. So we can show them in different view types. We can even cut through the model and specify the specific sketch uh, for that level, including in a section view, um, which is here. And they're all hyperlinked together as well. And then in the architectural tool, there's not a whole lot I can show. So we have a full suite uh, of architectural tools that are available. But basically, I'm going to focus on um, the schematic through design. So here we just have a schematic building. Um, and we have tools for space planning um, that are available. Um, and then within those space planning tools, we have the ability with push and pull type technology to dynamically change um, the BIM model. And you can see that the square footages uh, are dynamically changing as well. So we have the ability to be able to start at a very low level in schematic design and work our way into construction documentation. And one of those steps is the ability to be able to select that schematic design all the floors in that schematic design and be able to assign a floor slab to every one of those floors automatically. So select your type, apply it, that construction to the model, and add the slabs automatically. And then things like columns, um, again, we have interactive tools to be able to select uh, different placement methods, um, again, using that schematic model, being able to place uh, those items dynamically in the model. And then following that along, have the ability to be able to select different levels of the building and create walls uh, from the actual spaces in the building uh, automatically. Um, and we can do that for individual floors as well. So take the very schematic model, use all the tools that are available in Building Designer uh, to build the BIM model all the way through. Um, and we'll, we'll show, I mean, there's much, much more, uh, obviously, to the architectural package. I just wanted to show you a little glimpse of how things can work from schematic on. Um, and then there's other tools that are available as well um, in our suite of software, which I'll get to as we move through. So the federated model, Bentley uses a federated model approach, which is basically the ability to be able to control the size of the BIM model utilizing reference files. But they're intelligent reference files so that you have the ability to go in and modify the master model, even though it's a much, much smaller file um, that's been federated with reference files. So for instance, we have the ability to go in and change schemes uh, just by switching out um, a specific reference file. So we utilize that reference file to be able to switch out an atrium scheme and automatically update the master model. And then beyond that, we also have um, more advanced tools that allow you the ability, again, in that master model that's federated, to be able to select the roof, change the elevation, move that up, and add even floors um, to the model. So that, that whole approach allows for much, much quicker design changes um, based on the fact that the model is broken up into controlled pieces or controlled parts that are all federated back together in one master model. Hypermodeling is a technology that has been added uh, relatively recently. It's been around for a while. But basically, um, at the basic level, it gives you the ability to switch between different dynamic views of the model. So you have the whole view of the model, and then you can, from that view, switch dynamically to different views in the model. And you can see in this example, uh, we also give you the ability to overlay uh, the 2D cut of the model directly over the model. So hypermodeling not only gives you the ability to switch back and forth, but it gives you the ability 
to turn on and off different parts of the 2D directly in the 3D view and allows you to be able to zoom in, select the items, and be able to modify the items directly in the 3D model. So this is just an example, a very simple example of just selecting some text, um, which is from the 2D view uh, referenced in, and the ability to modify that, and then that'll show up eventually uh, in the actual finished sheet file uh, directly from the model. So again, utilizing the model and that federated approach to be able to select what you need in what view to modify that and have dynamically the end result show up in your um, deliverables. And here's just an example of, of that information being sent back to the sheet file. Generative components is also part, so all these things that I'm talking about are all part of Ecosim Building Designer. So they all come with the package. Generative components is an advanced modeling tool um, that allows the designer to basically build or form anything that they need to as part of the design and then interactively add that to their design um, and dynamically change that design with some really cool tools like this graph variable that we show here that allows um, for this sunscreen to be able to just dynamically change uh, the fin depths, the sunscreen elevation, as well as the height. So th just the ability to be able to change them dynamically and see your design change, and then have that end result show up um, in the model itself and there in the section view. We also have structural tools. Uh, so at a very basic level, um, we have very easy to use structural interface that allows you to um, place steel members interactively in whatever view you want of the model, so whether it's a 2D view or whether it's a 3D view, uh, which we show here, just very simple tools to be able to place that information from an extensive library. And then, you know, to place the members in between, there's also interactive tools to be able to select certain pla placement methods in the model um, that allows for so in this case, maximum spacing settings where we select uh, two different points and fill them in with steel members. Also a full suite of mechanical tools. So um, this program has the ability obviously for um, all types of ductwork, piping, mechanical equipment, extensive library of that. Again, because of the time, this is just a very simple example of the advanced hookup tool, um, which basically allows you to place an element, in this case a diffuser, um, select the duct that it's connected to, allows you to route that duct, it'll use the sizing tools, and it'll place that duct automatically based on your routing and size it appropriately. Electrical tools, and in this example, really all we show is um, just the ability to place lighting interactively, but there's a lot of different parts of the electrical tool, includes circuiting as well. Um, in this case, just a very simple interface to be able to quickly place lighting in your design model, and then once it's placed, we'll just show the ability to, um, it, I use this example, the electrical example, to basically show um, the properties of, of the elements, showing that the, that the elements in the model are intelligent and they come from standard libraries um, or built libraries um, that are available with you know, as much information as you want uh, in the model. And finally, we also offer uh, energy modeling through GBXML. So this is a really quick uh, video, but basically it shows um, the sectioning of the BIM model into spaces, and then those spaces are then exported via GBXML. We have some tools um, that allow you to do zoning, uh, that allow you to do spatial relationships, uh, heat loads. It's exported out in GBXML, and in this case, um, we'll show our energy analysis tool, which is uh, Ecosim Energy Simulator. Uh, we then bring that in. You can see all the floors come in separately, all the spaces are there, all the rooms are there, and all the properties uh, are there for the building as well. So we'll show some components 
and the properties of the components and the ability to be able to change them. And of course, the end result is, of this is um, whether it's lead accreditation or efficient energy modeling or whether it's um, some type of an ASHRAE standard, um, that's the end result of that. But thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.